What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioWare 3 Raw TV. So, tonight, we got about five weeks left now. It's time to start doing the picks. So, first of all, let's start off with talking about something that has pissed a lot of people off. Some people, his fans, Cedric McMillan, are happy about it, but some people are really upset about it because the IFBB AMI, I think it was AMI Weeder, actually gave Cedric McMillan this week a invitation to the Olympia. So basically he doesn't have to qualify to do the Olympia. Now, I just want to say this right off the bat. Now, I'm not, it's not that I don't like Cedric's physique, but let's face facts. Cedric is not in contention. He's not one of the guys we're thinking of right now. Now, he has won the Arnold Classic in the past. My view of this was the people that he beat in that lineup, I just feel like we're not the caliber that are going to be at the Olympia. Right, because he's always an Arnold Classic champion, but that's not the Olympia. Right, there are some Olympians that go in there, but the top guys at the Olympia usually are not banging at the Arnold when Cedric won. Now that being said, he got an invite, so he's going to be doing the Olympia. Now it's five weeks out; he gets the invite. Nobody really knows what the hell's going on. Has he been training for it? Has he not? Well, listen, I'm sure he's been training for it. Nobody is going to get an invite five weeks out and be like, "Yeah, let's do the Olympia five weeks." No, he's probably been training for it the whole time, but. People are pissed, and I'm like, you know, why are they pissed? Why he didn't qualify? Everybody else has to qualify. Well, here's the thing, man. They gave him an invite because of the fact that he's active duty military, and he's been on different deployments and things that he has to do. I don't think he's been deployed out of the country, but he's doing these different deployments around the country doing whatever it is that they do, or he does, which keeps him from being able to compete in certain shows and really puts a stop to the training and diet while he does this. It's a very physical thing. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of energy. So therefore, he doesn't have the ability to compete and qualify. I mean, he's already won the Arnold Classic. He's already won pro shows. It's not like this guy's a nobody and they just threw an Olympia qualification at him, right? I mean, they he deserves he deserves the, to be there. He's one of those guys that, let's face facts, the Olympia this year is looking like not a stellar production, right? So who the fuck cares whether or not you give Cedric an invite or not? It's not like they invited Kai Green. Now, if they invited Kai Green, which some people were talking about, I think that would be shitty. Kai Green is one of the number one guys. Kai Green should have to um, qualify to compete, right? Because it's not like he doesn't have the time. Like, he's doing things out there that he could put on stop because he's not forced to do certain things. He could do it, right? So if they gave Kai a, you know, an invite, I'd say, okay, that's a little shitty because they know he's going to go in there and mop the floor with everybody. He's beaten everybody before. So it's basically like handing him the fucking Olympia, right? It's not what happened. It's Cedric. So Cedric gets the invite. He's going to the Olympia, which is, I believe... Five weeks from this weekend? I think it's five weeks. So, that was like the big news. Is there. Been, ah, freaking the fuck out. Now, of course, his fans are happy. Now, here's the thing. No matter what Cedric shows up like, he's going against, you know, guys like Brandon Curry, who he's beat in the past, right? Dexter Jackson, who Dexter's beat him in the past. He's beat Cedric in the past. Ruley, right? Ruley's a top three. I don't think he gets second. I think he got th at least third at the Olympia before. So, he's going up against guys that are placed really high at the Olympia that haven't won the... The Arnold Classic titles, right? So now you're going, well, maybe. Where does he fit in there? We're going to have to wait and see. But because Cedric can't improve like the other guys can improve because of the fact of what he's doing with the military, means that he's always kind of bringing up the rear. He's always trying to, you know, kind of make up time in contest prep to try to get in shape for the show. And it's not his fault. I mean, honestly, he chooses to go out there and defend our country, which allows us to actually do what we do on the stage, right? I say we, not me. The body blows, but I'm a former body blows, so that's why I... But I'm not an Olympian, so let's just get that. Because I hate people that do that shit. We, no, no we. So they allow, what he does allows these bodybuilders to be competitive and compete and live the lifestyles that they lead. So now we have Cedric walk into the mix and let's face facts. We don't have a clear cut dog in the race, right? There's not one guy that everybody's like, I think this guy's going to take it. Now, I'm going to give you my picks. Now, I was just this weekend with Jay Cutler. And um, I'm not going to tell you about Jay's picks because I want to let him put his own picks up on on his um, Jay TV that's on uh, the Jay Cutler TV on his YouTube channel. But um, this is where I'm thinking so far. Now, it's definitely going to be whoever nails his conditioning that day. Everybody's big as fuck at the Olympia. Most of these guys have won shows that are in the top and they're not qualifying by points. They've either won the Olympia like Dexter or they've won shows to get there. Some of them have won multiple shows. Some of them won strings of shows. So... They're battle tested, right? So these guys are heading up there and they are the ones that have been around banging heads long enough and this is their chance. No Kai, no Phil, no Rami. Not that, I mean, Rami had dropped really low last year, but 
it's wide open this year, right? So to me, that actually makes it pretty interesting. I know some people are like, uh, to me, I'm like, I'm not super excited to watch the Olympia, but I'm very interested in who's going to win in the end. Like that's, or you just to even see prejudging and see who showed up in shape and then they have to hold their condition to be rejudged later on. I'm, I'm, I'm very interested. I would say excited, but very interested to see what happens. Now, I really feel honestly, in my heart of hearts, it's going to be one of two people that wins the Olympia this year. And it's going to be who comes in and brings it, right? Dexter Jackson, okay, or Brandon Curry. Now, Dexter, I would like to see win it because he's won once. He's ending the coming around the tail end of his career that he's talked about before. And I personally, if you said if you could step out of your body into someone else's physique, what would it be? Dexter Jackson. To me, he's completely flawless. He carries enough size without looking weird. He's always got that fucking that razor sharp condition. And like, I've seen Dex in the off season in person. I've trained actually. I've trained at Gold's Gym in Venice. And while I'm training, Dex walked up. And he's like, "Hey, can I use that machine?" And we fucking worked out in the worked the machine together. And I'm looking at him thinking he's like wearing a Jordan fucking tech top. And I'm looking at him going, "Holy fuck, he's so round. He's so full. Like, he's got the tools to be Mr. Olympia, and he's won it once before. So therefore, if he comes in in his best shape, which Tampa was like last weekend, now." Something happened in Tampa that rocked a lot of people's worlds, and people were talking about it, including myself, and Dexter brought his legs back. At his age, the first thing to go, well, Dexter's 49 years old, he's been 49 for the last, like, 10 years, but at his age, which whatever the fuck it is, usually the legs are the first thing to go, and you can't get him back. No matter what, for some reason, they don't respond to get him back at that age. Can't figure out why. Nobody hasn't, you know, there's all these different theories, but nobody really actually knows scientifically why that happens. Now, Dexter's legs came back. Now, before you start yelling stuff like, oh, Synthol, listen, he came back and his legs came back and they were fucking hard. They were like Dexter's old legs. So everybody was like, how the fuck? Well, he actually, he actually explained it. And I'm really surprised because if I was Dex, I would have kept my mouth shut and this would have been my secret. But Dex is an open guy, obviously, right? Brad Rose, an IFP pro who I've known for shit about nine years now. We were actually in a car commercial together um, for CarMax. We did a commercial together with Rob Ulis. Brad was talking to me at Gold Venice this year in January about this new machine. I don't know a whole lot about it. He was explaining it. And it basically, it's almost like an electrical impedance machine that contracts the muscles, but it's not like that. It's something completely new, completely groundbreaking. Hit up Brad Rowe on um, R-O-W-E on Instagram. He'll be able to explain all of it for you if you're trying to get in touch with him to figure out how to use this thing. Or if you're in Gold, you can hire him to actually use this thing with um, with your workouts. Now, what it, the way it works, like let's say um, I'm doing chest. You put these electro pads on your chest, what you think it would contract it, and you actually have this machine working while you're training. It's stimulating the muscle while you're training. So neurologically, if your legs are not being stimulated for your neurological system to get that stimulus to grow, like sending the signal for the muscles to grow, this thing can bypass that. If you have a weak body part, it can bring up that weak body part. I've seen it. Now, the machine is expensive as fuck to buy. Brad um, does like sessions, almost like personal training sessions where he goes into Gold Venice with you. He hooks you up to it and you train. It swears up and down that you can get like 30 workouts in one workout worth of results. And I've seen it. He has showed me the results. Like he, it, it is absolutely works. I don't understand the science behind it. It's very new. But Dexter used it on his fucking legs. And then he told everybody about it. He was like, yo, I'd use this thing with Brad. And I was like, holy shit, that's how he did it? I remember Brad talking about it. I remember the bikini competitor, he put it on her glutes because they needed to bring up the glutes faster than the rest of her, and it did. Here's a girl with genetically, I don't say weak, but genetically behind glutes, <laughs> no pun intended, glutes that are genetically behind development for the rest of her body, and her glutes came up. And it wasn't synthol, it was this machine that stimulates the muscle, right? So using this machine, Dexter brought his best package I've seen in a while to the stage, and he fucking won Tampa. Now I'm sitting here thinking to myself like, okay, that's Tampa. He's got five more weeks. Obviously, he didn't give it his all because the Olympia's coming up. Most of these guys, what they do is they give like 85% and they save that last 15% when they're gearing up for the big show, right? So you do like a warm-up show, test the waters, whatever the case may be, see how your conditioning's working, maybe you want to try new carb loading or whatever. You do that show, which was like kind of what Tampa was, or maybe you just want to collect the paycheck, go in there and fucking bang heads with everybody and collect the paycheck. But then you save that, that real push for the Olympia or the big show that you're doing, right? So now I feel like he's going to go fucking headlong, boom, directly towards the Olympia after seeing the results of what happened with this machine. Obviously, he's going to continue using that machine. If he shows up at the Olympia as the old blade, I feel like he's going to win. Okay, that's my personal opinion. Now, Brandon Curry's going to have to be off for that to happen. Now, 
if we see Brandon Curry come in at 100% and Dexter's off a little bit, we saw Dexter get beat many times because he just wasn't as sharp or he wasn't as full, whatever the case may be, it wasn't the old Dexter that we know. Brandon Curry, I think this guy, I talked to him probably maybe four weeks ago and when all this thing went down with Roden and everything, I said, listen, it's your time, man. This is your shot. You're at the point now where you're living up to the name The Prodigy, which was your nickname, right? They nicknamed him The Prodigy. He's living it up to it now. Now, a lot of people say stuff like, oh, his legs are not up to par. Listen, you don't have to have fucking big Rami legs. Dory Nates didn't have the biggest and best legs around. I mean, Ronnie did. He had some fucking crazy legs. Jay had some fucking crazy legs. But Phil Heath wasn't overpowering lower body like those guys. Phil was very balanced. And I feel Brandon is very balanced. And he's so fucking big and full. And he gets hard. He gets dice. We've seen him coming in like that. So now we have two guys that I feel like could be interchanged for first and second. And third, I mean, and I don't even know if this guy could beat the shit out of both of them. Because we've never seen him stand next to these guys like he is now. Ruli. Ruli put out a video. It's actually on my Instagram right now. If you go to my Instagram, Ruli put out a video. And it is the buzz of the internet. Everybody is talking in the bodybuilding world about this fucking video of him standing in that famous mirror out in Kuwait. And he fucking hits a most muscular. And when he hits a fucking most muscular, and none of us have ever seen anything like this. Not Dorian, not Nasser, not Kovacs, nothing. Nobody has been this thick, this full in that condition I think and even Victor Richards I think if he stood next to him he would look more impressive than Victor Richards at this point because of the fullness and roundness Victor was full Victor was thick but fuck man Ruli just looks like something from another planet like he's taking it to the next level and I don't, I don't know how well we, we we can speculate how but anyways and now we're like well shit we've never seen this version of Ruli stand next to these guys he got third last year was it right I think it was third last year so he's knocking on the door already and some people like Jay Cutler included have said He's a future Mr. Olympia if he keeps on this track. And I'll tell you guys that right now. Jay's not wrong. Jay's never fucking wrong. Whenever he fucking says, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, this person's going to... They fucking win. And I know because I pay attention. When he talks, I pay attention because I'm like, everything he says fucking comes true. So now I'm looking at Ruli is going, man, he comes in, fucking leapfrogs over both of them. Now, anybody after third, I don't even know who the fuck else is competing. Those three guys are the ones that I'm looking at thinking to myself, you know, or there was the one individual, like, Hootie, Howdy, I don't know how to say his name. He's not going to get the inv uh the visa coming from um, the Middle East. Where was he coming from? It was Iran, I think. He was coming from Iran. He's not going to get the, the visa in time or not at all. I think he could have been a top contender also with his conditioning and size. I think he's a little bit blocky in the waist. And I can't picture him beating Dex and those guys for the Olympia and having that type of look. But who knows what he would have showed up like. He might have brought his waist in by the time the fucking Olympia came up. But anyways, here we have Ruli, Dexter, and Brandon Curry. And again... We'll have to wait till the day comes of the Olympia prejudging and see what these guys look like. A lot can happen in five weeks. When people say I'm a month out from a show, it's getting close. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Your body completely changed in fucking four weeks. You can either be way behind and then be fucking peeled and win the show, or you can be way the fuck ahead and wind up lose a bunch of muscle and fucking make the show looking like a twig, or be way the fuck ahead, lose your shit two weeks out, not able to stick to your diet, and you showed up fatter at the show. Like a ton of shit can happen within four weeks. So now we're looking at Ruli looks amazing now. Brandon looks amazing now. Dexter's, he's the one I'm looking at because he's been in this position before. Dexter has been in the point where he knows how to control his body. He knows, he's working with George Farah, I believe, still with um, Charles Glass. So it's a team that he's had together for a while that knows how to control his body. He's been in these predicaments. I feel like he has the probably the best chances at winning the Olympia this year, which would absolutely change some things, okay? If Dexter wins this year, he will now be the second one in history, Jay Cutler the first, to lose the title and regain it. He'll be the first one in history at 49 years old, because we don't know how the fuck old he is, to ever, to ever win the Olympia, right? Because, I mean, Dex, let's face facts, Dex is older than Ronnie when Ronnie won his last one. So he'll be the oldest individual man to ever win the Olympia. So now there's some cool things going on here. So now all of a sudden, yeah, we may not have that, that dominant Phil Heat that we normally have. We may not have the... The hype with Kai Green trying to dethrone Phil. We might not have the, ooh, let's check out fucking Big Rami. He looks fucking massive. He's 300 pounds two days out from the Olympia. We don't have those things that usually get us all wired up and jacked up about the Olympia. But we have other things that I think people are not really paying attention to. And those things, I think, make it interesting. It may not be hyped. It may not be exciting. People are fucking freaking out. As far as I know now, I've heard ticket sales are actually down this year for the Olympia. But we have an interesting Olympia that really... 
there's no way to fucking call it. We're all just speculating. We're all picking our favorite people that we normally follow and we really like. We really don't know. At least in the past, we say, okay, well, Phil's favorite to win. He's fucking six-time Mr. Olympia, seven-time Mr. Olympia. He's favorite to win. You know what I mean? Like, we got Kai Green walking. Well, he's won all these fucking Arnolds. He's done this. He's done that. He's bang feds with Phil second place so many times. Well, he's favored to be at least a runner-up, if not dethrone Phil. You know, and then we had Sean Roden before, which Sean Roden has been third, second. Like, he's bounced back and forth. He's okay, now we got Sean in the mix. Sean can beat fucking Dexter and, and Phil and, you know, Kai. Like, well, what the fuck are we going to, like, we have a whole mix of people that we're used to seeing, and they're all gone. None of them are there. And now we have also heard that Sean Roden might actually be back in the Olympia. So Sean is training like he's going to be at the Olympia. And I, I give the guy um, uh, credit. Fuck, Sean. If, if you're watching this, man, listen. Bodybuilding is, yes, a physical thing, but it's like 75% mental. Your body follows your mind. If you can't get your mind straight, you're never going to make it to the Olympia in your best shape, let alone win. And Sean has done that. He's gotten himself to the Olympia and won, which means that he's able to focus, laser-like focus, to get on that stage and win the best show in the entire world in bodybuilding. However, the new added stress to him, I am I, I don't know, honestly, I couldn't do it. I'll be honest with you. I would not be able to do it if I was in his shoes. I'd be so stressed the fuck out that I wouldn't be able to concentrate on training. I definitely wouldn't be my best. I might get make it to the show, but I definitely wouldn't be my best. But now we have Sean, who says that he has evidence that he's going to present. I don't know how the fuck it's going to work, but he's hoping to get reinstated by AMI to be on stage at the Olympia. So now we have if Sean Roden's in the mix, if Sean Roden comes in 100%, he's already beaten all these other guys, including Dex, including Brandon Ruiz, beat them all. And he also has a physique that the judges like. They like that symmetrical with the small waist and not necessarily the biggest guy, but the best flowing kind of flux wheeler-esque. So we're like, well, fuck, is he going to be there? Or is he not? We don't know yet. So I'd like to say if Sean winds up on the stage at his best ever, better than last year, Sean's going to take it again. If he makes it to the stage and he's not as sharp as he was last year and the other guys show up sharper and they've improved, Sean's going to have a problem that day. I don't think he'll be able to beat them. I honestly, with all the shit that's going on in his head, I don't know how his body hormonally is going to wind up looking with due to the stress in general. We've seen plenty of times where somebody looks great two or three days out. The day of the show, they look like shit. The day after, they look fucking awesome. You ask them what the fuck happened. They're like, I don't know. Like I started to get nervous in the morning. I thought I was flattening out. Thought. So their fucking mind get the best of them. And next thing you know, they retain the water. They're all fucked up because their hormones from being stressed out have changed the way they look. So now we're sitting here going, fuck, what if Sean makes it to the stage? Will he be able to control those hormones, keep himself calm? How will the effect be on the body? Like, I mean, it's just a whole bunch of variables that we don't know. But I do know one thing. It is exciting. People are going to say it's not. I mean, it's interesting, but I'm going to find it exciting by the time we get there. Like, we're still five weeks out and everybody's talking a bunch of shit. When we get closer to the show... If these individuals keep putting up pictures in the social media and stuff, like some people like to, you know, just hide all the way up to the show like Dorian used to do. Last year, Sean was putting up pictures like two weeks before the show. I was seeing pictures of him a week before and I'm like, holy fuck. Stuff like that builds hype. So if these guys want the hype, they want to put asses in the seats right up to the show, they're going to have to show what they're doing, talk about their training, talk about their process, talk about what they're going to do the last few days. Have somebody follow them around fucking cameras, put it up on their social media, and really give people an insight as to what's going on to this contest because it's no longer like a one-man show. Now, we got five or six guys that could possibly beat anybody, and one of them is going to wind up at Mr. Olympia. And we have to wait to see if Sean's even reinstated. Like, this thing is really a lot of moving parts this year. So, chime in below. Let me know what you guys think of who you guys got winning the Olympia this year and why. That would be interesting, too, and know why. And um, we're just going to have to wait and see. So... If you guys are heading out there, make sure you stop by and say what's up. I'm not going to be at any booth per se. I'm assuming now, as of right now, um, if Muscle Sport Mag has a booth, I'll be at their booth. If not, Aaron and I are going to be wandering the fuck around all day, just meeting and greeting people and hanging out. And, and it's going to be a very, very different Olympia when you walk in not having a front runner, not having someone that's got the, the target on their back for people to beat. It's going to be very different. But... I think that we needed that in bodybuilding, right? We needed different. Last year we got Sean won, and people thought that that was a great thing because it was different. I had very mixed feelings about it because Phil Heath is a close friend of mine, and I really like Phil as a person. I do. I mean, from what I know him, he's always been good to me. He's always been fucking a gentleman to me, and I've known him for a good 10, 11 years. Sean I met when I first moved to Maryland, so I've known Sean even longer than Phil. I've known him from being in the gym. I've known him from being around. I knew him before he even started training again. I knew him when he was training for the North Americans, when he was training to become a pro. So it's like I was very mixed feelings. I was happy for Sean. I was upset for Phil. I kind of sat back and didn't really know 
how to feel about it. But this this year, without Phil, without Sean, we don't know if Sean's going to be there. But if Sean's not there, I really don't have a horse in the race. So I'm just interested to see who the best man is going to be. So, again, chime in down below. Let me know, guys. I'm super interested. BouncyTraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. But don't fight. BouncyTraining.com is a blog. It's who's going to win the Olympia in 2019 bicep. And we are out.